Okay. Hey, everybody. It's June 5th. You're here at the DEI Weekly Call for Chaos. Great to see everyone here. I hope your week is going well. Um, let me share here. Uh, this was about as creative as I could get today. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't even know how my own week is going. So that wasn't a great question. Yes. <laughs> I don't even have an answer. What's up? <laughs> yeah, right. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yes monday was uh, awesome and then it's been meetings 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 <laughs> well I, mean, I, will, I guess i will share that the conference that uh got the silver badge from chaos dei is going on today and tomorrow so they're very excited nice. and super excited to promote chaos through uh the badge i posted it on linkedin and <laughs> Uh, we put a, it did an at to chaos. It was really nice that I could at chaos in LinkedIn. So that was really cool. And they are hopefully going to have a good turnout. Uh, I, I'm going to try to catch some of the recordings later. But one of the feedbacks that they had that they thought might be more helpful, but I'm, I'm really kind of split on it because I don't know what the background to this is and whether this was already a, a decision made. When you click on the DEI silver badge, the HTML that it leads you to or the HTTP that it leads you to is to the actual GitHub issue, which I think is really good for transparency because it shows what was assessed and why it is that they got that silver badge. But they said that they felt like it didn't really give them a sense of why what what a silver badge is compared to say a gold or a different color badge and that going to the page that had the description of the badges would be more helpful to an ordinary user who doesn't want to spelunk through the whole github thing so i, I you know it's kind of a six of one half dozen of the other but i thought i'd bring it up since that was the feedback i got yeah i think that's valid that's fair feedback um, the reason we do that is to verify that the badge isn't just an image that somebody copied and pasted. So it actually links to the issue to like verify that they did oh. go through the process. So that's the reason. But to your point, I mean, it, if you don't know that context, if that's not the reason you're clicking on the badge to check to check it, um, then yeah, it is kind of confusing, and we don't really we don't really explain that anywhere. I wonder if I wonder how to solve that. I don't know. Could could you just have an explanation of the badges at the top of the GitHub issue? <clears throat> maybe like once they're closed or like finished, um, maybe a summary or something that said, here's the badge, here's the version they got, here's what that meant. Here are the, the you know, the uh, metrics that they attended to or something or, like that. Or yeah. even just an explanation of, you know, just like kind of standard text that goes at the top of the GitHub issue saying, you know, silver is 60 to 80 percent, gold is 80 percent or higher. Um, and it then is, it is there. That is it, there. At the very, at not on, oh, I see, on the issue. On the issue, on the, yeah. It's on the list, like on the readme. Uh, yeah, well, there, there is there is a whole page that explains that, but they were saying that when they clicked on the thing, they got to the GitHub issue, and then they had to spelunk around to figure out what it actually meant. I see. And that for someone who, their feedback was for someone who's maybe coming to the conference and isn't necessarily totally comfortable with GitHub, that that could be confusing, and that they might not be comfortable figuring out where to click to get to an explanation of what is this badge thing that is showing up here. So, and you can do whatever you want with it. I just thought I would give the feedback that they had because they thought that was a little confusing. In the, the most, um, I think maybe the easiest thing to do would be in the badging bot when it issues the badge, just say, here's a link. <laughs> Of the badges and it could just go back to the new file you know so like if i if you go to one of the issues and then just go to the list we won't solve it here but um, and then just like scroll down to one of the issues but go back Go back one more. 
go back. So scroll down. See how the issues are over there on the right side? So just click on all those issues. And then scroll down to the bottom of the issue. Um, so right there, see where like the third from the bottom, it's the, the badge is awarded by the badging mm -hmm. bot. Yeah. Like maybe somewhere in there we could link back to the readme page that shows that table. Like Would the there, could there just be something at the top of the page so you don't have to scroll down, like go to the top of this page. We could put it in the issue template. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like maybe in person event submission mm -hmm. and then um, you know, uh, that table under there so that, you know, people just know at a glance if they click on it, what it is they're looking at. Yeah, so it'd be somewhere in this page. Yes, whether at the top, to your point, Rhea. I'm not sure we'd have to take a look at the template. Yeah, because this is something that the organizers <clears throat> copy and paste and put in. So we could put that in there, maybe just a link to like explanation of the badges or something like that just like a link that would be great yeah right something to give people sort of an you know because if you get here you get to the github issue and you see all these questions but you don't necessarily understand okay so what did i just click on and why is this important or i i, I guess it doesn't quite sum it up without having to read the whole github issue and get to the thing where the badge bot awards the badge Okay. Yeah, we can certainly look at that. Cool. Thanks for that feedback. Yeah, I kind of figured you were linking back from a transparency standpoint so that people could understand what the badge was awarded for specifically, not just generically. Um, but I also thought their feedback was fair that it wasn't necessarily intuitive to someone trying to figure out, you know, they see this badge on the website or on the on the conference page and they click on it and then they just end up at a github issue and that can be kind of confusing yeah totally fair um especially if it's attendees you know like they're not yeah. gonna know what, <laughs> what the heck's going on so <laughs> totally fair um my daughter's calling me <coughs> she seems to always call me right a meeting <laughs> my son does too it's funny it's the same meetings every week like i don't know <laughs> Uh, they can't keep track of their own schedules, let alone ours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the kids today, they don't know how to tell time. <laughs> I, I love a statement that starts with the kids today. And he, I know. <laughs> so I was like, eh. oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, hey, George, right. great to see you here. Okay. Oh, so thank kids, we're talking about adult kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> These kids are adults. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, my daughter will be 24 tomorrow, actually. So yeah, she's an adult. Um, okay, so thank you, Ria, for that feedback. That was fantastic. I wanted to bring this back around. This was a metric we have been working on. Um, I did clean it up a little bit. Um, we've gotten some extra feedback. Uh, since then, so I wanted to just bring it back around and have people look at this if we want to take maybe five minutes to look at this. Um, I'm glad Emma took the time because she was kind of the inspiration behind this. So, um, yeah. Give an overview real quickly again of kind of what you think yes. this to be about. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So um, we have a metric called inclusive leadership, and it looks at um, the way that governance is kind of set up. Um, it's looking at it. So a lot of these questions are, are come from that, um, but it's looking at it from more of a, a diversity and inclusion standpoint, not a trust standpoint. So Emma opened an issue um, basically asking us to change the inclusive leadership metric to include this level of trust. And by trust, we mean like you're giving someone keys to the castle. They can do whatever they want with it. Like they, it, things can go sour. And do you, does your project have um, safeguards in place to mitigate that risk as much as possible? Um, you know, especially as a project grows and you uh, 
um, are you know encouraging more and more leaders to be a part of the project. It also comes with access, it comes <clears> with um, you know people being associated with the project. So um, yeah, so there is some risk that you know you're trusting people to kind of do the right thing and put the project's best interest uh, forward. So um, instead of changing that inclusive leadership metric, we decided that um, maybe this would be a separate metric. So that's what this is. Um, okay. Does that make sense to everybody? It does. Thank you. Okay. So um, we're going to keep the recording going because sometimes, um, you know, conversation crops up. But <laughs> if you're watching this at home, <laughs> you can fast forward through this part. Yeah. Uh, it'll be boring. So um, typically what we do in these meetings when we are looking at a, at a metric development, we will change this to suggesting. So if you don't mind doing that and then come into this document, read through it, ask, uh, you can put comments, you can make changes, um, you can you know, respond to any comments that are already in there. Um, that'd be great. So one thing I noticed is that Emma's bringing up this idea that um, trust in a leader can also be if they have the the skills to be a leader. Um, so it might not even be something that they do purposely or deliberately against the project. It could just be something that they don't uh, have the skills for. So uh, that is a lens we had not really added to this. Uh, what do we think? I see Rhea says a plus one. So then what would be the three parts of this? Would it be um, like as a leader, we're concerned that you may not have the skills and as a leader, we're concerned that you might have the keys to the castle and as a leader, are those the two things? Because we could specify <clears throat> like accountable leadership. Yeah, I think so it would be those two things. Okay yeah like if we're if we're empowering leaders that don't have the the skills or know how to to do the job then yeah okay i think a question i'm just reading the security framing about this specifically i guess one of my questions is is the implication here and maybe this is how actually real world policy things are going the implication is that as a leader of an open source project, you are potentially personally responsible for like understanding and therefore know like security stuff specifically, right? So, I mean, I would almost, I, this is, I'm looking down below where it's under damage limitation. Like I almost wonder if like there just needs to be a subject area knowledge to, in a shared leadership model, maybe not everyone needs every expertise area, but you could have people who specialize. And so I'm wondering if there's something that's more like, um, I was talking about this in the meeting earlier today, but some section on core competencies required to like- Zabitha. Know your- Zabitha, this Zabitha strengths on, or something like that. Strengths and weaknesses around core competencies. Like what you don't want is someone who's not in that competency area being the person 
responsible and in control of those things. So it's, but you can have access controls that mitigate for that. And so that's some of that tooling piece. I'm just wondering about the intersection between yeah. infrastructure that provides access controls versus like expectations of every person in a leadership role versus like the metric on the project of the team that is leadership. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, you don't, yeah. You don't have somebody who's a terrible boat captain drive the boat with your kids on it. Speaking as a terrible boat captain. <laughs> it's more like I, there could be the person who's the, there's the person in a boat situation. You have a captain who yeah. does need to have all of those competencies, but you maybe don't want your like security officer to be the person with no security competencies, right? Or correct. Like, yeah, I, that's yeah. more what I'm getting. Like it's um. Yeah, not as hearing you there. I just <laughs> made a bad analogy. I made a bad analogy. I tried analogies and I analogically failed. I think it's yeah, I think it's like I it's a it's a yes and like I think it's more like you, I think that my what we're trying to get at is capturing both of those things like if in leadership models where there is a person who is the like um full backstop top line person like they do need to have the breadth of core competencies and then if you are in a leadership role you either need to be like have responsibilities that make are aligned to your core competencies and some of the and then these core competencies need to be covered i don't know enough about how this is done to know exactly what to write about things so thank you Elizabeth, for typing <laughs> or like yeah. Or, yeah but hopefully like it's a combination it's a matrix of those things right that's kind of yeah a rubric or something is this kind of what you were speaking to like just just ask like just checking that well, I guess what I'm wondering is like, is it just a damage limitation? So um, this damage limitation piece feels like security is specifically stuck in stuck in there. And I guess I'm wondering, is it is there a core competencies section where security knowledge is one of the areas and the damage limitation? One thing I also just threw in at the top, and I'm wondering if it's maybe a helpful reframe, is like, it seems like we're talking about how resilient is the leadership team of a project, as opposed to like, is it just about accountability, resiliency and accountability to get at some of the risk part? Like, because some of this is about like, can you recover from problems, right? Or, um, I'm just, I'm wondering if there's a way both to make the security piece more uh, tangible and not just not be the only, because damage could also be reputational damage. It could, there's yeah. other types of damage that aren't security. <laughs> so I'm wondering if security actually needs to be a separate core competency somewhere. <laughs> to I like, haven't moved in the top to, your, to yeah. this point, like in that top, like overview paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, see where it says, including security breaches. I'm excuse me. I'm suggesting we just remove that because I agree. I mean, that's potentially one thing that could be problematic. Yeah. Kind of broadening the metric a little bit by just saying there are consequences <laughs> could be. Yeah. Significant. Well, and then we can get into it because it's like security breaches is a is more about an infrastructure and security practice thing. But like understanding privacy competencies would be about like what data do you store in the first place, right? Or just like data model, like these are all different things. Agreed. And yeah. like you said, reputation, like somebody just not doing a good job could kind of sink the project reputationally. Right. Okay. So what if we just remove like any references in the overview to any of these things? You know what I mean? By saying there can be consequences. Well, or you, or the opposite, like add a more descriptive. Or you list of, more of like, them. Yeah, yeah. I think both could be useful. Because it's accountable leadership as just a header doesn't necessarily imply those, all of those topics to me. Um, that reply, That to me signifies more like, does this person just like how accountable are you to your responsibilities? But though, like, what are the responsibilities aren't detailed in just that naming, if that makes sense. So I just added like an EG in there. Yeah. And you then know, you can go in there. Yeah. yeah. A few of them. The other thing that might just be worth doing, and I'm sure Emma had this in mind given 
in this position in the ecosystem, but um, security is a big part of like the current open source infrastructure conversation. Open source security is a big topic right now um, related to like various like federal <laughs> initiatives around infrastructure and security. Um, and so I, it, this is a good opportunity to push on that and to connect to those things, but it might be worth actually specifically looking at that. And if there's any like specifics to come into the competencies or into the pieces here, like putting this out there, a lot of groups might not have that right now. <laughs> and the, it, this could be an opportunity to like highlight the ones that do, this could be an opportunity to highlight things, positive things, and also flag opportunities around like needs for growth and um, professional development of open source ecosystems around security. All right, this is a particular thing that I like think a lot about. So I was like, mm. <laughs> I'm not articulating it super well, but. No, you are. Maybe there's the, see that section that's, that Elizabeth is showing kind of right in the middle of the screen, the security yeah. competencies, maybe just like working that out a little bit. So this metric wouldn't obviously capture the world when it right. comes to the things that you're seeing, but it can at least help highlight, excuse me, highlight concerns in that particular area. Yeah. Um, yeah, the links Rhea is putting in seem really relevant to what I'm saying as well, but cool. What link? Uh, further down, Rhea has a link to this like European, I haven't looked at the link, but just the um cyber resilience framing gotcha this is something that is in process right now the framework and the legislation has passed in the european union but it doesn't go into effect for three years so there's this period of rulemaking that's going to flesh out the framework that of the legislation. I kind of think of it as, you know, the administrative act compared to like stuff that Congress does, you know, Congress passes the act and then the administrative agency, you know, gets to brass tacks and figures out how you're going to actually implement all this stuff. So that is, it's very much a moving target right now. And I have to admit, I have not even read the most recent past legislation, but I think the concept of an open source steward is supposed to be a voluntary thing. Although it's also concerning from the perspective of it's hard enough to get leaders for open source projects. And there's a lot of them pushing back right now on the concept that, hey, I, I am not your IT department <laughs> and I'm not paid to do that. And I just put this fun project on here and I'm sorry you made it a critical dependency in your tool chain, but that's not my problem. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's a funny scenario. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been given OSPO talks in Europe a couple of times in the last year. And these, these regulations are at the top of mind for all the OSPO people in Europe yeah. right now. Like they're thinking, and there was just an AI one passed in the last couple of weeks as well that they're also paying a good deal of attention to. Um, but I, it'll be interesting to see if Europe can actually effectively provide regulation that improves the conditions of software in a meaningful way. I also just dropped a link into the document further down of the um, CISA news as of like March. Uh, just like efforts around um, open source security. Again, this is a big topic right now in the US as well. So, um, and just to, uh, to, to plus one, some of what Rio was saying, when we did some work with um, the PIP project uh, in 2020, when we were interviewing folks, a lot of people were like, security is a thing I don't know a ton about. Like, I'm because we were looking at dependency resolution and we were trying to make that the, the dependency resolver in PIP work better. But a lot of people were like security, uh, uh, the security of a dependency that is in my project is not my responsibility. And I don't like, I don't even know how to make it my responsibility for my project, right? Like it's just a big capacity gap. So anyway, I guess where I'm going with that is like, yes, it should be a key thing in this leadership document and it could connect to a lot of these initiatives. But I think we should also make it clear that like, Maybe that's not expected of everyone as a core competency, but more like if we're saying leadership generally for a project, like where does it fit? So. Like, I would, that's a 
I like that last part because I was just about ready to ask you that question. Like, how does this fit to the leadership metric? But so the idea would be is that security is probably one of the competencies that we would like to think about. <laughs> yeah, when, like I think it's like we're seeing that security is a critical competency in open that. source communities and in open source projects. Mm -hmm. So it should be so there should be someone in the open oh, source then, leadership oh, that has that and is like paying attention to it and is thinking about and trying to further the projects. Like so, like there's like a there should be someone with that responsibility who is effectively shaping, responding and engaging in like the changes in the field, right? Or something like that. Um, but I think it's like expecting the whole leadership, every person in leadership on an open source project to be a sec have security competencies feels like a lot. It could just be as simple as, do you have an open source steward pointed for your project? Security steward, like uh, someone specifically, like a. Well, I'm thinking of open source steward in the con in the context of the EU CRA, which is very cybersecurity oriented. Yeah, I might make it explicit just since everyone won't know that. What that is. Okay. Yeah, because I would. Which would be a sign that they don't have the confidence if they don't know what that term means. <laughs> well, I would. I would assume that means like someone who is a part of stewarding this project relative to the open source communities that they're in, like a Python project in the Python ecosystem, right? Like it just is a bit of a. It could be interpreted very generically. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe with capital letters and uh, link to. <laughs> yeah. yeah but nobody really knows what it means yet because i don't think it's been fully flushed out so it's a, right. like i said it's a moving target right um... so I, i'm fine completely fine with this conversation um when i look at the list of things that are here and it, it, maybe it's okay but like it certainly does highlight having security competencies so there could also be an argument that says somebody should probably have awareness of how to manage like reputational things around the project. PR, PR risk. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much we want to give each one of those their own thing. I, yeah. I would lean t more towards like naming core competence because we're saying this of the whole leadership of a project, right? Like it's not like this is, an individual person like this is a way that we're assessing a yeah. this is a metric intended to assess people in leadership roles the leadership group as a whole right of an open source project so not an individual person we, do you think yeah. we could if you scroll down elizabeth a little bit elizabeth like instead of security core competencies we could call this like leadership core competencies and then have a few dedicated to security yeah, exactly. Credited. Okay, cool. Gotcha. That, that was where I was, that was the yeah, direction. I think I that's what I heard right on. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then the damage limitation one might actually change header, but I don't know to what. <laughs> Okay, I think that um, we do have other stuff on our agenda today. So um, this is fantastic. I would like to propose that the next step for this is to move this to the metrics development working group, because I feel like it's slowly floating away from more of the diversity, equity and inclusion space and more into like this, the risk security space. So what do we think about that? Hmm. Yeah, this is a really good discussion to kind of yeah. identify what those um, headers were. I hear. Well, I, I, I'm wondering if there should be something specifically around DEI in the either somewhere in here, which I would actually say, I think what Elizabeth is saying is there's nothing about that in there. <laughs> should be. I mean, which if that's if that's the way it is, that's totally fine. Not all of our I metrics don't, have that. I don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about all of the metrics here but i i would say having like leadership that is representative of the diversity of the community is something that could go in here right 
And well, we what? do have um, inclusive leadership, which okay. kind of touches on that. Um, okay looks at like how diverse is your gut and I think we even have one around the governing board specifically um, as well, so uh, I think that's covered in other metrics so it's totally fine if it doesn't happen here. Okay. Uh, do others agree with that or do we think we do need to no, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I like how this is shaping up, I think maybe to George's point like put like damage limitation. I'll just put in you know, is this the proper heading. Well, or I guess, and maybe this is a question of like, is this entire thing really about risk mitigation? Like, I think it's a question of figuring out the top title. Um, uh, I like, guess it's what are they account? Are they accountable for the project, or are they accountable for diversity and inclusion? Right. That's the that's where I'm getting about. Like, I guess the in, like inclusive leadership as a separate metric makes sense, but if this is about accountable leadership versus like are we saying there's some questions there about is it risk and i added the comment resilient like what are we what is this metric for and then because then the flip side is if this one is supposed to be about security like that could be a separate then the whole thing could be but um if this is about accountability then it's more about like it might be it should maybe reference the inclusive leadership metric in some way I don't know. Oh, there's a, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a something effect that I think leaders need to be aware of. You know, they, a good, you could be a good leader in one thing that doesn't make you an expert or a good leader in everything. Um, and I think, I think that for, in terms of accountable leadership, that's one of the risks that I see when people take leadership over things they actually are not experts in. That's where I think open source and lots of things can get themselves in trouble. I can't remember the name of the effect though. It's like, it's not the Dunning-Kruger effect, is it? That is a thing. But I don't know if that's exactly what you're talking yeah. about. <clears throat> okay, so let's um, go ahead and move on to our agenda. Oh, sorry, Matt, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I mean, looking at this just a super quick read again, it really is about risk mm -hmm. how, as it's written right now, not accountability. <laughs> But it's how how you would think about risk management from a leadership yeah, and I think, perspective. I think um, Emma's original comment was to kind of flip it instead of like mitigating the risk. It's like how do you build trust or like looking at the the level of trust that you put into your. It's like a little more positive spin than like protecting from bad things and focusing on all the bad. It's like how are you setting how how are you setting things up so that leaders. Uh, can be trusted, maybe. I don't know. It seems like we, yeah, this just seems like it goes down two paths. One is, can I trust my leaders, <laughs> which is kind of one thing. And then the other is like, are, are the leaders of the project good at certain things? Those seem to be too different. Yeah. Um, yeah. How is it in other, me the other metrics about leadership? Like, how is that section? Define like is there a similar um, piece that's an intersection of like skills and competencies versus like action like evaluating actions? What do you mean? Well, like um, some of the things in here are, are more about do these things exist that represent that the project leadership has created them and knows what they're doing versus like. Do the people have the skills to do the things? Right. Um, and so I was just wondering, like you mentioned inclusive leadership metric, like what's the parallels in the inclusive leadership metric sections? Right. The parallels are are a lot. Uh, most of these, I would say 90% of them came from that metric. Okay. It's a literal copy and paste. It's just looking okay. at it from a different lens. So it was more of like, are we setting setting up structures and policies to enable inclusive leadership versus uh are we setting up policies and structures to protect the project from a leader that might be negligent or um, vengeful, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> vengeful. Whoa. Vengeful is harsh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, and, and to your point, Matt, like, I think it's about, you're, you're speaking to motive or, um, you know, whether it's on purpose or 
an accident because they just didn't know better, right? I think that's where you're seeing the big difference. Do you think that do you think that they these those two things can exist in this metric because the result would kind of maybe be the same or similar? I think they I think they can. I just think we need to title it differently. So yeah. So if you were thinking about it from how people do like a risk analysis, like one of the things that you would do is name the risks. And so a risk would be security, a risk would be PR, like, and there are probably more and it would depend on the project. So I think the question is how specific are we getting on um, specific known risks that should always be considered <laughs> versus like a risk analysis process and documentation where some of that is like then publicly shared um and like are there tools or like what you know are there and this i don't know um anyway th that might be different project specific right so like there might be leadership risk like is the leadership group too small <laughs> <laughs> and so therefore there is like the, you know, the lottery problem or like the bike, the um, bus problem, right? Of like, like that's a, that's a risk that might relate to doing an assessment of risk of the project that then is like considered in the practice. So I don't, there's the meta piece about like, has the project evaluated its risk <laughs> and defined it? Um, here are some known areas of risk that the team should consider and competencies in our key to like having this role and feel represented, right? Um, and so security is known, like reputational is another community management. Like I think there's like things that are critical aspects of open source projects that introduce risk that then could be flipped into like the competency areas and the um questions so I, I part of the issue is we either need to add more examples or decide what sets those like core sets of examples or like um yeah i don't or like or be less specific and have a framework for make in saying has a team assessed their risk <laughs> right that kind of thing and maybe this is it like is there a public assessment like to the trust point it's like how, what out what is out there about the project to, that describes the extent to which they exhibit um, expertise and awareness of these types of issues of risk. <laughs> so I just these are all great points. I think Elizabeth it makes sense to keep this metric here for a, a few more rounds. Cause I'm, my concern would be is if the metrics working group takes a look at this, they're not gonna know, like they're not gonna have a lot of the context that we're talking about here. And it might be useful for us to carry this conversation on for just a little bit longer so that we have something a little bit cleaner to get to that group. Is that okay? Oh, totally fine. Yeah, I just didn't want, if, if folks were like, this doesn't relate to this meeting, we should be talking about this in another meeting that would also be valid. So yeah, no, I told, I'm totally fine. Keeping yeah. it there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My concern would yeah. be is that it would show up there and they'd be like, let's talk about this next time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's down the road. And um, Georgia, one final point, I just was um, to your point about it being a part of a bigger risk analysis or risk assessment. I feel like that could be a practitioner guide that mm -hmm. Don put together and using some of the metrics to like, this mm -hmm. is how you do that thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don, yeah. Do you know Don Foster? I don't know if you know her, but she's um, our. Yeah, she's. I was just going to say she's our director of data science, and she's been putting together practitioner guides to help yeah. folks like actually use these metrics and like implement and iterate and um, interpret them. You know, like all of those things. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I was like, I know the name, and I'm trying to remember why, and it's like I have read blog posts with her name. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read some things where her name's on them. That makes sense. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I think it's like, yeah, so that would say like, here's a metric and then here are the like tools for implementing or practicing the metric better. Yeah, cool. And how it overlaps with others and yeah. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Thanks everybody, wow. <laughs> that's a big long conversation, a little more than our five minutes. Yeah. That was fantastic though, okay. no, this is great. Uh, sorry. <laughs> like, no, sorry. it was perfect. It was reading the Georgia shows up too, and that's awesome. Oh, it was absolutely perfect. Um, we 
brought this up last week. There was a lot, lot, lot of discussion about this. So I don't know that we can finish this in five minutes. Um, so I'm going to, if that's the okay. conversation positive, I had to step, I put it on the agenda and then I left. Yeah, I know. That's why I brought it back <laughs> up here. Um, and landing Ding dong ditch. Up. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, it, we had a ton of discussion, Matt. It was super, super positive. Everybody, okay. there's a lot of folks who are very excited about this. Okay. Uh, so we can either continue it async. We can just bring it back next week. Um, what would you prefer, Matt? Um, we can talk about it next week. I don't think there's a huge rush on it. Okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that had great ideas around it okay. and were very excited to participate. So, um, yeah, I think it will be a, a meaty discussion. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then we we do have five minutes, so I'll just bring this up. We um, last week we mentioned talking about what our stance is officially on badging events that are not open source, and we talked about it a lot here. There were some pros and cons, so we took we decided to take it to the weekly community meeting, which we did yesterday. Um, these were the comments that were made yesterday. Uh, this idea of just maybe limiting it to tech events specifically, not necessarily having it have to be an open source event. Um, but then also there was some um, ideas that maybe we just do a few and see how they go, see if it's, you know, okay, if it's weird. Um, and then also getting a little bit of data around our badging uh, programs so far so that we could kind of justify uh, expanding into the non open source space. Uh, if you know, I think the the general feeling is if we're going to do it, we should do it and not just um, be quite as reactive as we usually are. So <laughs> with that, so um, just be a little more deliberate and mindful and like make it a thing that we do and we announce and we think about um, and, and kind of plan for. So that was what was talked about yesterday. Um, happy to open the floor for other comments. Yeah, I've thought about this a little bit more since yesterday, just so folks know that maybe weren't on the call yesterday. I think there was a C++ event that was interested in applying for a badge. It wasn't necessarily a conference about open source, more just is about the language, if I think, if I, that's right. I, I'm wondering if this is it. Is this it, Mary Blessing? Is yeah, this CPP is C++. I mean, I feel bad they're just kind of hanging out here. Well, it looks like there's some review being done. Yeah, looks like that, I mean, and the conversation, so it looks like it's happening. So that's yeah. cool. I'd have to look a little more deeply, but um, like I said yesterday, my my inclination is sure if we're helping events, best center DEI in their events, and to think about DEI, great. And yeah. a lot of our metrics I, don't necessarily have to be just on open source events. I think I think we've wandered into success. And with that comes additional attention and work. And the fact is, this is a context where it doesn't really matter if it's open source or not. And I sure don't want to be in the business of trying to, I, you know, police what is open source and what is not open source. I don't want to have that argument with a conference. What I find very curious and super interesting is they are um, going with our new version. So they have extra me metrics in here. Yeah. Um, the public health and safety part of it, they, um, did not check. But what was interesting is, as I'm reading these comments, it looks like we we recommended that they do that. Um, and they went back and talked about it. And there were a few concerns, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they're going to hold off. But what what we have spurred is a conversation among the conference organizers to go at least look at it and then make a decision like that's fantastic. That's, that's the, whole the goal. Point. That's the yeah. whole point of this. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, even though they decided not to to sign that they at least looked into it and they made a deliberate decision and you know they have reasons and like i'm very very happy about that so i think i think we can just run this eddie inka yeah and, we should just issue this one and yeah and I, i'd say you know c plus plus c plus plus is pretty okay. hardcore too so i think this is a really good thing that they're interested and we should encourage it Um, okay, so it 
kind of made a mention that he wants to address a particular thing that one of the badging reviewers um, suggested, and that is to create a digital copy for the uh, public health safety requirements. So I'm waiting on that. Okay. Okay, but I yes, think... I'm just wants... Can you hear me? Yes. I'm just going to reply him and give him room to um, do as much as he can. And then we, we run the results. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yes. I think that makes a lot of sense. So we seem to be kind of gently leaning towards, sure, if you're a tech event and you want to <laughs> consider how to set through DEI, right on, you know? And, you know, just one more thing that that DEI application is, it does take a while to fill out. Like it's not an, a super easy thing. So the fact that they did that and <laughs> took it upon themselves to fill that out, like, yeah. that's great. I would, yeah. And the first time it's always the trickiest, I think for folks like at the LF, it does. It's yeah. maybe a little easier just because they're so familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And we are one minute over. What in the world? Uh, all right, we're on that minute I will never get back. Leadership, <laughs> leadership accountability. Yeah. I can't facilitate meetings on time. Yeah. Yes. yeah sure. uh, you I'll guys take, are awesome. I'll take that minute off the back end of a Joe Burrow fourth quarter this season. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. I'm sorry. Time. No, I won't. I'm not that mean. I'm not that, I'll give him an extra one. The oh, Ravens gosh. can take the minute. Have a great uh, rest of your week, everybody, and we'll see you here next week. Thank you. Thanks for the time today. Yes. Matt, is there is a possibility of talking for like one minute, <laughs> or just yeah. I just I added I wasn't sure what's going on with this versus the re regional conversation and. You could stop the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, can you talk for a minute? <laughs> like, I can. Hold on. Stop. There we go.